Right, so what is going on, guys? Welcome to 101 on Arsenal. We're here to do Arsenal versus Manchester City. Uh, I love the way I, I have the background done there. So Drew is sitting in his famous sky blue and uh, I'm enveloped in the Arsenal. Drew, how are you, bro? Uh, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. It's been an interesting international break. Could have been better on the injury front for uh, City, but we've got some potentially exceptional news coming out of the Etihad, which I will go into later. Ooh, I cannot wait to hear that, bro. I cannot wait to hear that. So, but everything's been okay because we, we haven't had a, <laughs> a session for a while. Obviously, there's been no football and I went through to hell and back with my lungs. So we haven't really done much on a Friday night, but everything's been okay with you. Yep. Um, to be honest, yeah. Got, got a new job. Life's looking up. Premier League's kicking into gear nicely. We've got, is it eight games left now? Yep. And it looks like we might have the best run in for quite some time with three teams who could genuinely win the league. Yeah, for real, man, for real. Uh, let me just switch over over to here and we'll get started. Uh, what's going on, Cam? Cam says Drew looks 10 years younger. <laughs> what the <laughs> what, what are you saying that like you looked older before <laughs> I look like yeah. I'm not going to lie I look like <laughs> shit last time you guys <laughs> <laughs> oh my god well obviously the, the, with me coming back in I've been just buzzing all over the place with Arsenal's form um, he says Saka and Gabby will play Martinelli might not start but if he doesn't he will definitely be on the bench. Yeah, we're going to come and talk about that. So, guys, it's a huge, huge, huge game. We're here to talk about it tonight. So, let's get started. Uh, the thing is, we're going to cover, as we normally do, keys to winning, form guide, injuries, uh, predictions, things like that. But I want to talk about, let's go into Man City first. Let's talk about City. Let's get Drew up and running uh, with what's going on. So, where they are at the moment. Um, they've won eight consecutive games against Arsenal in all competitions um, at, at the Hetihad. As I think the last time we got anything there was the 2-2 draw in May 2016, I think it was. Um, but 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 since then, when, when you look at... And you know, people talk about Liverpool like not losing in 50-something games at Anfield. But City, I think they're unbeaten in like 38 matches at the Etihad. In, and that's in all competitions. Um, we, we've only trying... dropped eight points in that period of time as well. Yeah, I think it's the 133 and drawn five or something like that. But yeah. either way, the the thing that concerns me the most, and, and I have to say this, this is where I think the battle's going to be won and lost, is City have, uh, I think they have, they have a current record at the moment where they've scored in 57 home games in all competitions. That's incredible. You you scored in yeah. fifty seven games like in a row. That is incredible. That, that's bearing in mind as well. We <laughs> we spent twenty of those games without arguably our two most dangerous players on the field. Um, so I, I mean, I, I, I'm confident we will score against Arsenal. I'm not going to say I'm confident we'll win. But I don't think this is where the league is going to be won or lost in this game this weekend. I agree. Yeah, I um, agree. It's it's definitely crucial. Um, if if one team wins, I think it's going to put Liverpool out of the pitch, though, because I think Liverpool are about to fall apart without Andy Robertson. So, and, and speaking of Liverpool, and speaking of Liverpool, this was the same time two years ago when I had this conversation with you and Neil. And Andy and Tony and I said, uh, Bertrand was in the conversation as well. And I said to you guys, I, I think it was it was ludicrous. What was going on was it was like 11, 12 games that Liverpool and City were just winning every single game. Yeah. And then it came down to them too. And I said to everybody, if Liverpool does not win this game, they won't win the league. And everybody said, ah, rubbish. We, we've still got a long way to go. And what happened? Liverpool couldn't win. It ended up 1-1. And City ended up winning the league by a point. And I was 100% right. Because for me, and I said it last year, if you want to be in the champions, you've got to go through the champions. If you don't yeah. stop City, if you don't beat them, as far as I'm concerned, you're not winning a title. 
And the only reason why Arsenal are top of the league at the moment is because they've had four points off um, Liverpool this season and three points off City. So for me, it's like City, Pep knows, Guardiola knows, they cannot let Arsenal win this game. They know, they can because if Arsenal win this game, then bang, four points clear. I mean, <coughs> I still think that against other teams, you're still more likely to trip up than what City are. Hmm. But the one thing that worries me, our record against the other top six teams this season, we've been dropping points. So we've still got a couple of games left against other top six teams. I would rather beat Arsenal this weekend, obviously, but we can get out of it with a draw because I think you're more likely to drop points against the lesser clubs than what City are. Yeah, we still got to go to Old Trafford and Spurs, haven't we? I mean, I, I, when I said lesser clubs, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I thought I thought I'd throw one in there for Andy and the like. <laughs> What's going on, Emerson? Shout out to you, bro. It says evening Apollo and Drew, and to see you on Sunday for the watch along. Yeah, I'll be here. Um, that's Easter Sunday, so a lot of people are going to be travelling. I, my niece is is doing. She's cooking the Easter dinner, so I said to her, I'm going to be there at twelve o'clock. And I'm leaving at three thirty, so I can get back here to do the game. So yeah, yeah. So it's a it's going to be a very somber Easter for me. But I did want to talk to you about uh, about that in Man City because you bring up a, a good point. Now City um, are winless in all five of their top flight fixtures. Yeah. Um, this season against sides that are currently in the top five of the table. Now they've drawn three, and there's lot they've lost two. Um. So I'll let you answer it before I do because my you know my view view on that is pretty substantial. But what's your thoughts on how you're going to approach this game? Um, what, what's what's going to be the difference? I think the one thing I would say the game we lost against uh, your guys down in London. Obviously, we ha we had Harland on the field, but we didn't have De Bruyne. One thing I'm going to say about Harland. Up until Foden started to hit top gear in late December, Haaland didn't seem as serviceable without having De Bruyne fitting in the team. Yeah. It now appears that we have found a way of coping without De Bruyne at his best. Mm -hmm. The worrying thing, though, about De Bruyne as of late is we've seen a few signs of petulance between him and Pep. Um, Ooh which hasn't been a great look, um, quite honestly. But I'm quietly confident that we could actually take De Bruyne out of our starting eleven in the next 18 months and mm. not suffer a fall off from it. Because we seem to be getting Foden into the right area of the field. He seems to be becoming the perfect number 10 at the moment. So having him unleashed now, which is what it appears to be, I'm a lot more confident in City minus De Bruyne all of a sudden. Um, defensively, though, against the uh, other teams in the top six this year, a big fault that we've had is playing Varadol at left back. He has struggled against quality wingers. Um, so quite honestly, against you guys this weekend, we already know John Stones is out. We know Kyle Walker's out. I would hope that Ake starts at left back and Varadol moves into the centre back position. That's our best way of coping with the pace that Saka provides because Ake's a much better defender yeah. on the left foot than what Varadol is against the winger. So City are going to have to be a bit smarter defensively than what we have been against pure out-and-out -out wingers like Saka in the past this year. Yeah, because what I would do, me personally, I would start Jesus on the left, Havertz in the middle, and then Saka on, on, on the right. That's what I would do. I don't know what the boss is going to do. Um, there might even be a Trossard factor in that as well. <laughs> we might just to see be honest, I, I think Trossard is actually your better bet to go through the middle against City than what Havertz is. Really? Yeah, main reason being against City, um, Havertz doesn't play on the shoulder at all because he he doesn't have that 
pace to get away from a player or the trickery of a Trossard. I think if he's got he, the movement. He he's remember he's made more oh, runs he, into the final third than, than any he, other player he's, last he's got, season. He's got he's got he's got the movement, but yeah. against a team that presses as high up the field as City, yeah, that movement will get him in behind a couple of times. But he's not going to get away from Varadol, Akanji, yeah, yeah, or Diaz across yeah, the yeah. ground. Yeah. Whereas Trossard, he's a little bit quicker. If he gets five yards on you. You could be in trouble then, yeah. Um, yeah. If you're a city centre back, so it it is going to be an interesting one to see how both teams line up here. Um, Havertz being more that kind of like false nine position mm. plays into the way City play, pushing up the field. So some someone that plays a little bit more on the shoulder, like a Trossard, or even putting Jesus through the middle, that might be more worrying. For the city centre backs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let me go to uh, see what the, uh, the guys are saying. They're joining us in their abundance at the moment. Uh, good evening, Kurt. He says, "Evening, Apollo and Drew. I firmly believe for the first time in a long time, the city players will be the ones fearing us and not the other way around." There's definitely a level to that, especially with the results. Arsenal. I think they've <laughs> they've had four clean sheets in a row away from home. Oh my lord. So if we stop seeing who, from who, who here, against though is the thing. Yeah, I think there's been uh, a plethora of teams. I'll have to look at the schedule, but I definitely know it's been four um, games in a row. Uh, what's going on there, uh, Vincey? Good to see you. Kurt says, but I think in this match it would be a close one decided by a mistake, and and that is a key thing. I'm glad you said that because that was part of my pros and cons with Man City getting a result. Is that City just don't make mistakes? They just don't. They're not so not well at this oiled. stage of the season. In yeah, general. they just don't. They are they are as squeaky clean as they come. Uh, Cam says when City played Arsenal on a thirty uh, which is this Sunday. It's on that date in two thousand and one that David Rockcastle passed away. Oh yeah, um, so they can use that for motivational talk, which actually he says in the next thing. Yeah, team talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, I'm, I definitely... I'm going to be honest. Most of the players in your squad won't have a clue who Roe Castle was. <laughs> Barely even born before he was. Yeah, he was I, mean, I, I, I make this joke. I saw Mike Summerby come out at a City game last year and none of our players knew who the hell Mike Summerby was and he's one of our few club <laughs> Oh my God. My, my favourite Manchester City player uh, when I was uh, on trial at Watford um the most the, the 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 one I admired the most was Peter Barnes. I thought Peter Barnes was probably the best wing in the league at that point. Um and a lot of people gave me a stick over we, that. We we went through a phase in the seventies and eighties. We had some phenomenally gifted wingers. Amazing. Um problem was we didn't have anyone else in the team. <laughs> yeah. Had some great wingers, but no central midfield. No yeah. striker. He, uh, we had Niall Quinn. Yeah. Good point, actually. Yeah, no yeah. strike. Oh, you you had to suffer that indignity for a while as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I said. Yeah. <laughs> so speaking of strikers, um, talk to us about Haaland. He's uh he's failed to score in eleven of his last sixteen appearances for club and country. That is, it's not just. For... Um, he's been a bit of a weird one. I mean, he's the Premier League's leading scorer still, which considering he is in a bit of a mini rut is astounding in itself. It shows how lethal he is when he's at the races. What I would say though, is I think there's a new style starting to sweep over city in yeah. the way we're attacking. Um, the play is a lot less lateral all of a sudden becoming more direct, mm -hmm. which is, Obviously, he, he's a very direct forward. But he got used to the way we were playing last year with all the lateral passing, picking apart space, and then De Bruyne sliding a ball through to him. All of a sudden, we've got Doku, who has been... I'm, I'm going to say he's the best newcomer to the league, in my opinion, this season. Um, not just he plays for City. I think he's an absolute delight to watch. Um We've had him being a very direct winger, going at defenders, sucking them in, causing problems, but maybe not sliding in the passes that we would have seen De Bruyne providing last season. Foden 
or Alvarez, whoever's playing in that number 10 role, are very similar in the sense of they're not putting the ball through as rapidly for Haaland to make the runs he was making last season. Mm. So he's having to kind of adapt and learn how to play with this different style of football. The signs have been starting to look up, though. He's getting the chances now. Chances that he maybe wasn't getting a month and a half ago are starting just to fly out to him. So if he's now going to get settled amongst the way that City are starting to play more through these players, he's got he's he's going to have that performance at some point. Yeah. Problem is he's against Arsenal. Saliba seems to have some kind of hoodoo over him, quite honestly. Um, but how mentally right is Saliba after the crap that's gone on with Didier Deschamps? basically saying that Mancano's a better centre-back. Because that's got to hurt, because Mancano is absolute dog crap, quite honestly. He is one of the worst centre-backs in Europe, in my opinion. And Saliba's been told that he's not getting in the French team whilst Mancano's playing. Which Yeah, can't... I mean, Saliba is still 21. A lot of people are still surprised at how young he is. But he hasn't oh, I'm, really I'm... made his mark for France. You know? I mean, to be honest, we've We've got this thing on the weekend of City versus Arsenal. If Varadol starts a centre-back for City, we've probably got the two best young centre-backs in world football mm. on the field at the same time. Mm. Which, I mean, I'm not going to say which one I think is better. I think Varadol's got a lot more he can do. Mm. As a pure defender, I think Saliba's a better defender. Mm. So... And he, do, he does have this little hex over Haaland, which eventually Haaland's going to have to snap out of it and give him a proper game. Because when we when we played you earlier in the season, Haaland was... I mean, anonymous is the only way I could describe his performance in yeah. uh, at the Emirates. But, but you know what? That's not, down, that's not down to him because a lot of teams that we play they've been exactly the same way. It's just due yeah. to the way that Arsenal dominate the ball and, and the press, that not a lot of teams are getting anything. I mean, you know, Liverpool, we've played them twice. And in two games, they've had two shots on target against us. So it's I mean, not I, just City. I would <laughs> say, though, one thing that helped you at the Emirates and helped starve Haaland of getting the best through the midfield, we were possible. well, not possibly, we were definitely missing a player who I think will be in the top three uh, for World Player of the Year this year, as long as uh, FIFA don't fudge it. Um, having Rodri out against you last time, I don't think there's a more important player to a team in the Premier League, quite honestly. I agree, and the stats back that up. 100%. Yeah, yeah the stats back that up well, 100%. What, 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 is it 13 months since he last lost a game now? That's right, yeah. Uh, yeah. At, at any level, international international starts and uh, domestic starts. That's last probably the biggest key battle in the whole game. Yeah. It's the biggest, biggest key battle in the whole game. Um, so let me go to the guys here before I go on to Arsenal. Uh, let's see... A camp says Martinelli is a bigger miss for us than any other player. Uh, he says Martinelli is so important in a game like this. It gives City a lot to think about, particularly and Walker possibly not making it. Um, this is just another pacey forward and means we need another pace forward in summer. I personally don't think that Martinelli, I think he'll be on the bench, but I don't think he's going to start. And the reason why I say that, um, I passed the training ground today and for the morning session, he didn't train. So I, I don't know whether he trained in the, in the afternoon session. Sometimes they do, especially when it comes to a couple of days before the match. They like to, they don't like to put them out in the morning session. They like to do therapy, um, massage, and then film work. And then they get them in an afternoon. So I don't know, maybe if I look online um, and f I might get more details on that. But to my knowledge, he didn't train um, for the first part of the day, which probably... That's going to be a game time decision, but I wouldn't start him. I, I I just wouldn't. I I think you'll get more if you put Trossard or Jesus out on there. John Martinelli with twenty minutes to go when the City have tired legs. Um, we saw what Martinelli did to Liverpool in in that same reign. Um, nobody wants to face a fit 
fresh Martinelli with 20 minutes to go. So that's what I would do. Um, G says, Jorginho could easily push up allowing Rice to mark Kevin De Bruyne. Is that, that, well, that's what they're going to do. If Thomas Partey does not start, it will be Jorginho sitting back and Rice will move forward to help um, with the press and the, and, and the dominance to, to stop City from getting any space at all. Because really, that's what we've been doing to, to, to every team. When I look at... The, the um, thing is, though, that's to every other team. I don't think Kevin De Bruyne is going to be starting in the number 10 position on Sunday. Interesting. I think I think Foden is going to start the ten. I think we might move De Bruyne back alongside Rodri and play more, play him more as the pivot in midfield. Yeah, um, that's because because Pep has to counter it. There's no way he can go in there knowing that this Arsenal team has shut down City. They've shut down Liverpool twice. They're shutting everybody down. Um, the last game against City was very un. On, on City versus Arsenal, like in terms, I of... know, but you were also you're missing the two most key components of our midfield in mm. Rodri and KDB in that game. Mm. It's, it's why I'm not paying. If Arsenal beat us this weekend, I will take my hat off to them because yes, we're missing Walker and Stones. I think we can beat most teams in the world without Walker and Stones at yeah, full fitness. Yeah. Without Rodri and De Bruyne, it's a much different proposition. Yeah, yeah. That that's literally the heart of the team uh, gone with those two both missing. Because in the last game, it, possession was fifty-one to forty-nine percent, so it was even. Uh, City had four shots, one on target. And we had twelve shots, two on target. Um, corners were pretty even as well. So very rarely have we ever seen a game between these two teams that had those kind of stats. So. Yeah, uh, I, and and the thing is, our away form has been the same as our home form. In fact, I, I think when we play away from home, we 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 tidy up a lot better in terms of, especially at the back, uh, we don't play as loose. Uh, we're more compact when we play away from home. So that's why I like this matchup. I like it a lot, and uh, and for me, so that's going to be the key to it. But for me, I, I mean, we haven't done the double over Man City since two thousand and eight. Which is the last time Andy won any silverware? And, oh my um, god! <laughs> it really is that long. It is that yeah, it's that long. It's that long. But you know, I mean, oh my god, we year... we still we still had a dodgy time prime minister as our <laughs> owner at that point. Crikey! I know, <laughs> and I do want to point out, guys, that Robinho has been arrested for uh, yes for rape. Rib uh, rib for... Uh, no, he's he's not been arrested. He is serving. Um. 12 years in a Brazilian prison. Wow. He was uh, found guilty in Italy, and uh, he obviously thought, I'm in Brazil, there's non-extradition. Uh, turns out the Italian courts and Brazilian uh, courts came up with an agreement to put Rubinho behind bars for a wow. minimum of 10 years with a maximum of 12. That's incredible. That is incredible. So, um, so, so for me, guys, if if... I think this year, this calendar year has just been nothing short of incredible with Arsenal. Eight wins in a row, four consecutive away clean sheets. Um, the last uh, the last time they won nine in a row was probably 2004 as well. That was the Invincibles un unbeaten season. So, I mean, we're really seeing a lot. But for me, Havertz, I, 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 uh, me, I would start Havertz up, up top of striker. I don't care whether Jesus is, Jesus is fit again. Um, he could be the first player to score five consecutive league goals since Thierry Henry in 1999. You know, so so that's how how well he's playing at the moment. But um, this moves me on to injuries. Now, I, I heard you talk about, um, I, I believe, uh, the, uh, Carl Walker and John Storms is going to miss. Edison, is yeah. Edison back? And well, apparently, he, apparently he's missing until mid-April, um, Edison. Oh, training with training with the first team this morning, though. Oh, so okay. it looks so... like Edison. The rumor is will be fit to start. Do we take what? the risk on it? I I don't know, but quite frankly, having Ortega in goal is like having a packet of polos in goal. Quite frankly, oh, so Lord. I, if Edison is eighty percent fit, I start him. Yeah. I hear Quite you. Honestly. 
And and what about um, obviously a kanji you've already talked about? What about a kanji? Um, a kanji's fit. Yep, Kevin De Bruyne and and Mateus Nunes. Uh, De Bruyne is fit. Nunes is eighty percent chance to be in the squad. Mm. Um, Excellent. But I I don't see how we could justify having Nunes in the first eleven this weekend at all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we we've got to go with proven big game players. Quite honestly, yeah. um, for Arsenal, there's a chance that um, Gabriel. Saka and Martinelli will recover for this game. I think that Gabriel would be fine. I think Saka will be fine. Martinelli, I think, is going to be on the bench. I, I I could be wrong, but that that's what I'm getting from today. Also, David Raya, who couldn't play in the Brentford game for uh, obvious reasons on loan, um, he's going to be come back. He's going to be coming back um, to 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 take that number one uh, shirt back off Aaron Ramsdale. So. Um, let's talk about our predictions uh, at the moment now. Kurt says, Apollo, who would you start for us at left back? I would keep Kivior in there. I just would. Um, I would. I prefer Tomiyatsu. For me, Tomiyatsu would be my first choice. I know, Tim, I know Tim, Timber, at the moment, Timber was supposed to play in the last um, friendly game, uh, but didn't. They really, for some reason, I mean, he's fit. He's just, you know, they're trying to get him up to match speed at the moment and he's not quite there. But by all this, accounts, this isn't Tim, the game Tim to risk fit. it either. Is, yeah, is I know. It? Yeah, let's, I, let's be honest. I hundred percent agree. It, it, the same could be said for Thomas Party. Thomas Party's played three games since he's been back, um, and he could start. But I don't know. I don't know because again, it's the game speed. I mean, for me, like Thomas Party was Arsenal's best player last season, and I remember that January where he got man of the match. He bossed City completely around. We ended up losing the game because of Xhaka and Gabriel. Um, but 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 Party was immense. Like, the City couldn't get anywhere near him. That's the kind of play that he can be for us. So if he's on point and he's 100%, for me, he starts. But because he hasn't played a lot of football this season, that's just a no-no for me. Not in a game like this. You cannot afford to take a chance. The team that you have... Have won eight games straight. Don't fumble the ball. Don't mess it. Don't mess up. So for me, that to answer that to, to that question, I would probably start Kivio, um, even though I know Tomiyasu would be a bit a bit a job. But because Tomiyasu has been out a little bit, <laughs> I remember when we went up there last year. Tomiyasu made the mistake, which made Kevin De Bruyne score, and we just can't afford to have any mishaps. The team has got to be solid. They got to know I'll what be they're doing. Completely honest. If I took yeah. my Man City hat off for a second, I'd probably start Kivior at left back as well. Yeah, Simply because yeah. we're probably going to end up playing Bernardo Silva as the right winger. Yeah, yeah. Silva is not blessed with pace. He's not going to expose Kivior's one weakness, which is he can be beaten on the outside by a true winger. Yeah, yeah. So he's defensively solid. He's going to keep Bernardo in front of him. That would make sense if I if if I wasn't a Man City supporter. As a Man City supporter, I would rather you start anyone that's uh, really immobile and uh, defends like a donkey. Quite frankly, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I I would I my, here's 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 the prediction for me. Um, God, everybody's saying it's going to be a draw. Oh, what's happened there to Drew? Uh, Drew's back. Right. Um, here's my here's my prediction. Everyone is saying it's going to be a draw, and and to be honest, I can't see anything past that because of the way Arsenal play now. Um, they've nullified City, but at the same time, City's still a quality team, very tough to score against, and on their day, they're just as good defensively as we are. I know we're the best defense in the league. I know we've scored more goals than anyone in the league. We lead both charts, uh, and that's why we're top of the league. But this is where City comes on strong towards the end of the season. And and yes, this is going to be um, a massive pull, especially when, as I said, Man City do not make mistakes. Um, and they have their best form in the latter part of the stages of the campaign. So on the flip side of that, Arsenal, for me, are the growing team. They're emerging as, as the strongest force in the Premier League at the moment now. They show no signs of last season being a fluke. They're more experienced. They're bigger and stronger. My God, when you measure up the size of those Arsenal players, 
at the back. They're playing four centre backs at the back. They're all over six foot. The midfield again: Declan Rice six two, Havertz six three. Uh, we've got some big boys in that team. It's a big, strong, physical team, and they're more solid and they're more reliable. And I think that that is the reason why Guardiola hasn't had much luck against them this season. And the template was again in the charity shield. I like it when Guardiola said, "There's no such thing as a friendly." <laughs> that was that was classic by him. But but all, what we saw there was Arteta's way of 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 cancelling out Pep, and both of them knew that. And that's the reason why the game at the Emirates ended up the way it was. It's pretty much a stalemate, a deflected goal. Without that, it was a stalemate. I and mean, I think I can, the the I, reason the reason that game ended up going Arsenal's favour was because we were missing our two most influential players. I, I mean, I I I can't see past the fact we were missing Rodri and De Bruyne. I mean, if you were to take Rice out of your team and uh, Saka, well, we had yeah. I mean, we had no party in Jesus in that team and. Um, right, I, right. I, I've suffered the indignity of having Jesus as a Man City player for six seasons. Yeah, he is a good player. He's not a player that you write home about and rely on as one of your best players. Party, yeah. he's been replaced by Declan Rice. Declan Rice was brought in to replace Party. Yeah, I think you have to remember as well. Um, and this is why I don't, you know, you've mentioned injuries a few times. I don't kind of really buy into it because most of the times we've lost to all of you guys, we've we've been injury riddled. But as far as the first game, we didn't have our best player. Saka didn't play. So I know I know Rodri wasn't no, there. Fair. Yeah. So, you know, Saka, but whether he did or this, it didn't, it didn't it kind of didn't really bother me um, because we've had injuries against the top teams for years and we've still had to go in. And, and and put a shift in and we've struggled because of it so i completely understand what you're saying but i think the fact that you know we had as i said quite a few players out that didn't play in that game um and party's back uh saka's going to be back for this game um we started with eddie up front in that game as well but i i think it's just going to be a very very difficult game and and by all accounts, it looks like the two teams cancel it out. On on paper, it looks like it's a draw. And but I, I but for me, the reason why I'm going with an Arsenal one nil win is because we don't win here. Titles not we're not going to win a title. That I, I I and that's just my opinion. I don't think we, we. It's hard because it's predicated on you saying it won't. This game won't be decide the title winner. But then I bring back that Liverpool game of two years ago and I can't get rid of it, Drew. I can't shuffle that game aside. That game haunts me um, because of Man City's dominance, you know, three, uh, you know, three peat. And that, and that game there would have stopped it. So I think with Man City, there's no room for error. And if we don't win, we're not going to win the league. Um, so I'm going with one nil. What are you going for, Drew? <sighs> I mean, head says it's going to be a draw. You you want to win though, don't you? I think our I, views are probably the same. I, I I I think it's a draw, or it's going to be a three 0 Oh really? I there's just something about this time of year. City can blow anyone away, no matter how good they are. Wow. And it will either it will either be a draw, it will be or it will be a statement victory. Wow! But and, I think and, most likely it's it will be a draw, most likely. Yeah, I think you're right. As I said, you know, my my brain and mechanics and football knowledge says it's 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 a draw, but my heart just wants us to win so yeah. bad because, if, like I said, for all the reasons I talked about, cities. Um, how strong they get towards the end of a campaign that 50 that was it 37 game unbeaten streak at home which is just incredible 57 games in a row where they've scored a goal i mean if yeah, we the, other, the other there, thing i would point out though remember in our last uh what was it i think it's our last eight games against you it's 24 2 yeah yeah, yeah, um, yeah at the etihad in terms of goals that's the that's the only other thing i would 
point in City's favour, but this is a different Arsenal is not team, the, bro. Yeah, this is not <laughs> this is not the Arsenal team that we smashed apart yeah. a couple of years ago in the running. This is a different team altogether. Yeah, it's so, a different team. And the thing it, is, it's not like Man City don't know that their fans and Pep they know they've watched this Arsenal team, they've played them, they know they've seen what they've they've been able to do. They know it's a different Arsenal team. So, but it, we I have mean, I, we have also seen you wobble less than twelve months ago and completely fall apart at the final hurdle. Oh yeah, again because, again, that, because that's, of what you that's said. That's the, the other thing that will yeah. get into the City players' heads. They know that. I'm not going to say Arsenal are mentally weak. Yeah. But they're still going to be carrying some of the scars. Yeah, of course. From what and, happened and, last and, year. And and the thing about that is when I think about Ramsdale's wife having a miscarriage, party had gone off, um, Saliba missing for the last 10 games. So this part of last season is when we lost Saliba and the defence went to crap. Um, yeah. And we couldn't hold on to those, those, for those three games. Uh, the Southampton, the West Ham, you know, where we were up. And then we just ended up drawing. Saka missed a penalty at West Ham as well. It was just like everything capitulated. And it started with those three players that just went off the boil, which was kind of the core of our team as well. Um, this is the opposite. We've got players now coming back. They nearly have a fully fit squad. Without the fact of Martinelli, Timber obviously coming back. With those two... They've got a fully fit squad, which like as that's the complete opposite that's happened um, from previous before. So, and then the season before that, we didn't even have a squad, so we just ran the legs off our players until they were completely knackered, and then they just ran out of gas. So it, it looks so different right now, um, and, and and I'm not even focused on the Champions League. Like whatever will be, will be with the Champions League. But I mean, me, I, like, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. At this moment in time, I think I'd rather win the Champions League. And I've never, I I've never ever said that. <laughs> but at this moment in time, I actually just want to win the Champions League again. Could you imagine if Arsenal win on Sunday, they beat Bayern Munich, and then Man City knock Arsenal out in the semi-finals? That would be ah. Oh. Then Arsenal end up winning the league, and City ends up winning, uh, do, doing a back-to-back -back on the Champions League. That would be incredible. The thing, the thing oh. is, though, it would kind of. Like, I hate to say it, it would overshadow Arsenal winning the Premier League, though. <laughs> you think so? Genuinely. I Genuinely. don't know, because they haven't won it in 20 years, Arsenal. And, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It, I, it, I, it may do. It may do. I mean, I, I mean, it, it, it'd be an interesting debate. Which, which yeah. one gives you most money? Champions League. Yeah, yeah. And apparently that's all football is now, is money. So Yeah, and, and it's only going to be be more with the new teams coming in with the new format as well. Uh, oh, the, the, I know. The, change, the changes to the Champions League have cheapened and demeaned the entire thing. Yeah, they've worn it I'm down, concerned. haven't they? But we'll talk about that next Friday when we all get together. Yeah. Um, but guys, I just want to thank Drew for joining me tonight and all of you guys who are watching this. Thank you very much. And I appreciate all of your love and support. And um, big game, man. We're going to feature the game here on Sunday. I'll do the watch along. Um, and then we'll see you then. Thanks a lot, Drew. I appreciate that, mate. No problem, man. I will Cheers. see you uh, soon. <laughs> Cheers, guys.